Now, stage three of Imperishable Night is a fun one. Um, you know, you got cool bullet patterns and nice music and everything, and really awesome backgrounds. I really like the backgrounds of the stage. But uh, most importantly, this uh, this uh, stage here, you know, depicts the beginning of a character who is really all too infrequently shown in Fanon, and um, also too has, I would say, this um, one of the two hardest names to pronounce in the entirety of the Toho series. Um, her name, and people will forgive me if I'm getting this wrong. This is the closest I think I can get to it. Kane Kamishirasawa. Yes, that was a mouthful. The only one name in the whole series that competes with that, I think, is Sikieki Yamazanadu. Ugh. Ugh. I need to, usually need to have a swish of Listerine after I say those names. But, um, so, something, there's uh, a really powerful canon slash fanon disparity here. And, um, now, here she is. I think, I think her portrait art that Zoom does of her is very good. But, um... There's a pretty uh, strong disparity here between the way that Zoom depicts her and the way that the fans depict her. She is a human sympathizer. She's um, she's half of an ancient yokai beast called the Hakutaku, but um, she protects a human village of people. And you know, in in Fanon, we often see her depicted as like a history teacher or an intellectual, or you know, somebody who's uh, lecturing the other characters on any subject really, although most especially history. Now that comes from the fact that here in the game, she is uh, called a history eater. A history eater. It's not been properly explained to me what that means, although from what I can gather from the in-game dialogue and some of the canonical writings, um, that means that she can basically swallow up past events and past places and people as if they had never happened. Like, for instance, she, you know, uses some kind of a magical trick to hide her own home village from the intruders, uh, the player characters, as they're coming through an imperishable night here. And this is a really horrifying concept to me, because somebody made a really good point on an image board some indeterminate amount of time ago that, you know, the ability to eat history given to a moe blob, that's like some hideous, horrible power that HP Lovecraft would come up with. I mean, it's not too hard to, you know, picture Kane here playing poker with Cthulhu under the seas. I mean, that's really terrifying, you know, eating history. Um, but, yeah, I mean, what else is there to say? You have here, um, right now she's in her human form, and mohehehehe. And, um, I, I see a few fans of KNA, but she's not as popular as a character as I think she deserves to be. I mean, her fan and depictions simply are of a functional purpose. Hey, she's a teacher. Let's use her for that role. And then, you know, more often you see her, um, depicted with the, um, with the extra boss uh, character of Imperishable Night here, um, Moko Hiziwara, which I think happens to be a far more awesome character. But hey, you know, just go ahead and pair anybody with anybody. I don't really care that much. But, um, of course, then the question comes up, why is Kane perhaps potentially, theoretically, um, why would she be less popular with some people? I don't know. I know you can't see it because I don't have a camera on me, but I'm I'm shrugging with the furiousness of a thousand ancient Chinese masters learning in, in the ways of shrug fu because it's totally random and arbitrary and ooh, I died so lovely there. The um I mean, there's there's traits that Kane has that you think would make her as attractive and acceptable to any to any of the fans as much as any of the other characters. I mean, we all like intellectual girls, right? I mean, just because we're a bunch of fat, sweaty nerds with pimples and glasses doesn't mean we're intimidated by a woman who's intelligent. I, I didn't say any of that. 